Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards and today we're doing a head-to-head -head with two of the most popular 75% aluminum kits that are out there on the market right now. First up we have the Keychron Q1, a 75% CNC aluminum QMK via keyboard that comes stock with a steel plate. It has 82 south facing hot swap sockets and an encoder. It is wired connectivity and is available in carbon black, navy blue, and space gray with a very limited white option. It comes included with all the necessary tools and a coiled USB cable and it is priced bare bone with the knob for $169. So as many here will know the Keychron is a very popular unit. Keychron has been in the game for a while. About a year ago, started releasing the V-Series, which are great QMK via keyboards. They're not gasket mounted, they're tray mounted, but they're pretty good keyboards. One of them actually, uh, well, they all actually kind of, I don't know if this is what the series is named after. It's just my um, perception. I think Q stands for quality because the Q series are some of the better ones that they have, while the V stands for value. Now, I could be wrong, but no one's corrected me yet. We have the Mons Geek M1. It's a 75% CNC aluminum alloy keyboard. It comes stock with a PC plate. It does list as a QMK, though I have not been able to find the source, but it's also VIA and VIA compatible. As with the Q1, the M1 includes 82 south-facing hot swap addressable keys and an encoder. It is of wired connectivity and is available in pink, black, white, purple, and red colorways. As with the Q1, it also comes included with all the tools you will need, some extra screws and a coiled USB cable. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $99. So Mons Geek is one of the, I want to say newer entrants into the field, although they are a sister company of Akko that's been around for a while as well. From what I gather, they're the studio behind the Mod series that Akko came out with about two years ago, um, where they, unfortunately, they were north facing, all except the 007, which they kept going with, and they finally released a south facing version of. Um, there was issues with those. I'll just say that. I'm not going to dive into it. I've got a mod 007 version 1. Um, and I think they went to version 4 or version 5. But it definitely does not come into play in this head-to-head. -head. With this Mons Geek, they kind of flipped the game of what budget keyboards now entail. Because this is a significantly good keyboard. I mean... For what it weighs, it just feels solid. It has QMK, Bia, and Bile, and is also per key RGB addressable. Not only that, it comes with a PC plate stock. Today, we're going to take a look at both of these head to head and just list out the features, the pros, the cons of each one of them, and hopefully help you answer any questions you might have before you decide to purchase either one of these two. So first off we'll go with the Mons Geek M1. As I stated earlier, Mons Geek is a company that is an offshoot or a sister company of Akko. Uh, they do uh, appear to share uh, the same, at least shipping facilities, because anytime they send something out to me, um, it does come in an Akko box. Uh, now I have been dealing with them uh, since about the time they they came out with the M1 or shortly thereafter. And they have been very, very affable, very nice, uh, very attentive, um, much different than what I'm used to with Akko. Now, granted, I haven't had any direct dealings with Akko after uh, the whole thing with one of the mod keyboards that I'm not gonna get into, but I'm still a fan of their keycaps and a lot of their switches, despite a lot of their switches I'm coming to find now have very similar sound profiles. 
But going on to Monsky, first they came out with the M1. Now they do have a couple of plastic keyboards and I'm not familiar with them. Um, I do believe they're sending me one out to test the MG75 or the MG108. I'm not sure which one they're sending out. But as of right now, they have two um, M series keyboards. They have this one, the M1, which is the 75%, and they have the M2. So honestly, I think they did, when I saw this lineup, when I saw they went from 75% to an 1800, I was like, oh, okay, they're actually paying attention to the market and what people are looking for. Because yes, the 75, 65% are quite popular. So their next one is a TKL <laughs> and TKLs are popular as well, but there's just a lot of people that regardless if they'd like to save space on their desktop, it just, it would hurt their productivity too much to go from a full size keyboard to something without the numpad. But this to me said, okay, these guys are really paying attention to the market. Not only do they not have a metallic plate stock, it's a decent PC that has just enough flex. Well, on this one, I haven't quite modded it yet, but you can see a little bit of the flex right there, just enough. I'm not crazy, crazy about flex, and I like how they've done this. Now, they do include in their uh, packaging some extra gaskets, which they kind of double as gaskets for the screw and stabilizers, but you can also use them for the force brake, and they work quite well. Now, Mons Geek, and, and, and they know that 75%, they're popular with the knob but they didn't go all knob crazy with the 1800. So there's things that Mons Geek has done because of omitting the knob in the other series that I think speaks to their paying attention to the market and paying attention to the hobby and what people are looking for. That attentiveness I think is real important in any sort of market because that means you're, you've got your finger on the pulse. I hate to sound it like that, I sound like a news station, but being aware of what people want is going to lead more likely to you delivering a keyboard or a product that's worthwhile. And in this case, the Monsky is a damn fine keyboard, especially when you take everything into consideration and realize that this keyboard is $99. A $99 aluminum CNC keyboard with open source firmware? I mean, come on. If I would have told you that even a year ago, that there'd be $99 CNC QMK keyboards on the market, you probably would have been like, yeah, sure, sure, buddy. Made out of what, fake aluminum? <laughs> so we have come a long way since that. Now setting the M1 aside for a second, we've got the Q1. Now, Keychron has definitely made their name in the industry, they've, they're, probably one of the um, first major companies besides, I guess, Massdrop to really get into the mechanical keyboard space. Now they did when they first got into the game, their focus was very much on Mac keyboards or Mac mode or Mac compatible keyboards. Um, but as they saw the market change, I think they, they found because when they first came out, I, I want to say they did they have closed source software or they just didn't have software for the, the C and the K series. I don't believe they have software. I mean, C and K, most of them can now be flashed with Sonic's QMK, so you can get QMK on them. But when they first came out, that I recall, I think all the programming was done just on the keyboard itself. Now, they did go through a period of having QA and QC issues, but for the most part, they seem to have cleaned those up. Complaints are down and people are really hyped about their keyboards, especially the V-Series. I'm a big fan of their V-Series. Now, as far as the Q-Series go, I bought the Q1 V2 uh, when it was first released, and I don't know why, I just didn't pay attention to the plate material. I just assumed it was gonna be the same aluminum as it was on the Q1 V1. But when I received it, I was like, this isn't aluminum, this is steel. Why is there a steel plate on a $170 CNC aluminum keyboard? I don't know, nobody can answer that. Uh, for as long as I've had the Q1, I must have opened it at least half a dozen times to mod it. Um, and I could never 
find the right pitch no matter what I did there was always that just a metal not necessarily a resonance well maybe it was a resonance it, it was kind of like an after sound like you have an aftertaste and no matter what I just did not like how it felt it was like okay yeah it's nice and solid to pick up yeah I like this this is you know really nice but then I would type on it and I'd be like yeah this feels like just a cheap keyboard um, and it didn't sound very good at all now recently I purchased the FR4 plate uh, the plates I remember one day I was like okay I'm, I was looking at Divinity Key and they were out of stock and I had messaged I want to say Scott I can't if I'm that's not your name I'm sorry but I was like hey when are you guys getting some more of these plates and stock and he's like hey I'll let you know and he shot me an email so I went on I purchased the the PC plate and then after I did a, I want to say a few hours later that same day I was like maybe I should get another material plate just to compare and I went back on the Vita key and they were all sold out and this was a matter of hours so uh, plates do seem to go in and out of stock very often before they had come in stock Keychron posts up files for their plates which I think is a really uh, good idea I mean it allows you if you have the access to the manufacturing for you to make your own plate now there's this company on Etsy called custom with a K keyboards and they sell plates for Keychrons but uh, the plate that I had received from them um, actually caused me to pop one of my hot swap sockets off because the tolerances on them were just awful so personally I would recommend either buying official Keychron plates or manufacturing them yourself but if you do be very careful of tolerances and I just cannot recommend because not only are you gonna waste your time and money there's a good chance you could damage your keyboard do not get aftermarket plates for a Keychron because you're just gonna have headaches and that's that's my personal advice now I did purchase this I believe it was on a sale and I believe I paid $154 but I also paid I want to say $25 for shipping so with taxes and everything I mean just under 190 which I mean don't get me wrong it was bare bone at the time I thought it was a pretty good deal but it wasn't until I changed the plate out that I actually finally found this keyboard even halfway satisfying because with that steel plate it just there was no flex to speak of it's like well I got a gasket mount keyboard and it's not like I like crazy flex but at least a little bit of flex none really none to speak of even pressing down now I've got the FR4 plate it's not crazy but there's just enough now again this is $169 that's the MSRP I think right now it's on sale again for $154 or 159 um, I don't remember exactly but it's in the it's north of 150 regardless so head-to-head -head, uh, these two keyboards while very similar because um, they share obviously some design language or 75% keyboards um, they're both QMK via compatible though the Mons Geek has a vial as well I don't believe there's vial available for the Q1 but I could be mistaken now as far as the lines go um, the Keychron has more of a squared off bezel or corners whereas the Mons Geek has more of a rounded corner and you can see they're almost the same dimension though the Keychron I mean the M1 the M1 does have a little bit more space that it's taking up uh, lengthwise now another thing about the Q1 is that lovely accent now they didn't go all crazy like GMK and put side lights on there which is fine I mean I know some people like them but I think that accent um, metal plate which I believe they may already be available or they're going to be available metal bars in different colors or aluminum I should say blocks that you can set in there because those come in and out now the M1 now I know there's a new revision but when the M1 first came out you also had to force break these side mods um, but starting with the M2 that's no longer an issue and I believe the newer M1s don't have that issue as well but so looking at the profile we have a nice uh, 
accent. Now, I believe that there's a silver and a gold accent available. Um, but honestly, I just, I think that's a good, good design touch. It gives, gives the keyboard a distinguishing characteristic that stands out from the rest. And they did it with very little effort. But having those two colors also, when you're talking about aesthetics, now granted you can go with any colors on here, but I like that I can match not only one, but two colors. One gripe I do have about the M1 is definitely going to have to be the encoder. It appears that the um, encoder is soldered at just off, just a little bit off of an angle that where it's basically pointing downwards a little bit. So it forces that knob to rub against the bottom. You hear that? That's that knob. I mean, even if I'm pushing it up, it's the knob rubbing against the inside. Now, yes, that is a pain in the butt. I would prefer not have to deal with that, but knobs are easily available and you can replace them. Now, this one, this one is about the size of the hole, so you still get that a little bit of scratching, but there are smaller ones that are available. Actually, believe it or not, I believe this is a one off of a, another Keychron. Though you're going to have to find the right size uh, to fit in there, which is 17, I would say anything 17.5 and uh, below is going to fit. This one we have is a 16, so I'd say I would aim for 17. That being as this one is, stock one is 18.9. So anything between like say 17.5 and 18.5 should be good enough size knob to fit in there and not rub against the um, the uh, inner body because that that really is honestly that's really the only gripe that I have with this particular keyboard is that it has this this issue with the knob I mean everything else they got right but that tolerance I mean it's almost at a point that I want to go in there desolder it and maybe solder it back on with a little pad or something just to buy that bit of an angle because you can see that you got space all the way around except for right there so other than that these two share extremely similar uh, layouts except on the Mons Geek M1 we do have four key navigation column and on the key cron we only have three um, the uh, the M1 is also extremely heavier it's almost twice the weight um, than the key cron is it is a very solid keyboard and because of the fact that it does come with the PC plate stock it is going to sound much better out of the box you can just grab it as it is grab some unlube switches and some keycaps, throw them on, and you're good to go. So these both um, include screw-in stabilizers, though for the M1, it does come separate, so you're gonna have to open it up and install it, but that gives you the opportunity to go ahead and do the force brake mod. Unfortunately, with any of these aluminum two-part kits, force brake mod is almost a necessary mod, um, so much so that Keychron's V2 revision, the Q1, includes some kind of like gaskets it doesn't really do that much and it's slight um, but adding basically either the pads for the screw and stabs or using a thicker tape like a gaffer's tape and put it on either side of the screw hole on the case is basically going to act as a dampener almost like a shock absorber so that metal isn't slapping against metal and you're not going to have that hollow resonant metal sound whenever you strike a key so with keyboards like this unfortunately that has become a necessary mod um, problem is on the keychron not that this is a problem but because the, the screw and stabilizers come already pre-installed there's not much impetus to go in there and do it unless you know you just know off the bat what you're getting into whereas with the mons geek m1 you do have to open it to install the stabilizer so you can go ahead and lubricate them how you like and while you're at it you can go ahead and install the force brake mod at that point, once it's put together 
honestly, for me, I, not only because of the price, but also because of the quality. And like I said, the only gripe that I have about this is the knob. Now, I know that they're aware of this and it may have been fixed. Like I said, I got a hold of one fairly early on. So I've got to believe that they've addressed it by now because I know they have, you know, they, they, they have acknowledged receiving reports of that. So I've got to believe that in the latest revisions where they corrected the side panels to no longer be loose, they should, they probably corrected for that as well. Will I go in there and actually fix it one day? I may. If I do, I'll make sure to make a video of it. So for me, while both of these are, are good keyboards, I think this one, despite its little nitpick of the knob, is a better value. For what you're getting for your money and the fact that it comes with a PC plate, just puts it over the top to this one. Now, if they were both the same price, one might have a bit of an argument. But still, if that one comes with a steel plate and they're the same price, why wouldn't I just get the one that already comes with a PC plate? Why doesn't Keychron offer this with your choice of plate? Because they make all the plates, they make aluminum, they make brass, they make PC, they make FR4. Why can't you choose it when you purchase it? I mean, the brass plate alone is $30, but the rest of them are $15. So, I mean, jack up the price of the steel plate so that it matches and then let people switch them out and pay the extra if it's brass. So I don't know about that. Now I do know that the M's Geek, the, the Mons Geek M1, Mons Geek, they do also have the choices of many plates, but same thing applies. They tend to go in and out of stock real quickly. So I have so far taste, tested the PC. I currently have the FR4 plate. The next plate that I'm gonna be doing a video on is the Palm plate. And I think I'm still waiting for the aluminum plate. Yeah. That one is still on its way or when they have it available even if you were to sell these at the same price brand new i think i would lean more towards the m1 as it does just it just sounds better and i think a big part of it is the plate part of it though could be the fact that it's substantially heavier so there's more material now this is an aluminum alloy and the keychron is a aluminum 6063 I'm not a materials expert, so I don't know the difference, but I do know that this one feels a lot more solid because it's heavier. I hope that today I was able to answer any questions that you guys might have might have still had lingering about either one of these keyboards. And if you're currently trying to make the decision between these two keyboards, I hope that I was ever able to provide enough details to help you make a decision you think is best for you. So. To close out the head-to-head, -head, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of both of these keyboards. Now, they are both loaded up with FR4 plates. I wanted to get as close to similar as possible. So, FR4 plates on both. Akko Purple Lavender on both. Stock, not lubed. As well as Ghost Judges PBT Double Shot keycaps from KPR. So, as far as it's concerned, we're basically dealing with the same switches and the same keycaps. Which one sounds better to you? Leave you guys with the stock sound test of each and then a super cut between both of them so you can hear them side by side and see what you think. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.